Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big. Check, check, check it, it's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad, walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, threads, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to hop over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. But not only subscribe, but buy a membership. Y'all always see us on the street and be like, man, we love what you're doing. Keep it up. All of that. Show your support by buying our membership. How you can do that. You type Boss Talk Podcast 101 anywhere. You find us on any platform. But under the description section of this interview and any of our interviews, interviews click the description you'll see a link that says join our membership that is how you can support us thank you in advance man hey man listen man we got a special guest in here today he don't need no introduction i thought i knew the nigga when i met him you <laughs> know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> man listen man this guy right here i bought with memphis right memphis. kelly k dub is in the building what's going on man what's happening man i'm so happy to have you on the show man i appreciate sometimes the universe just aligned and get a nigga right in where he need to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I've been dealing with the comedians, man. And I love it, bro. Like, when I started my podcast, at first I thought I was going to be a rapper my damn self. I had so many of them on here. But mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, it, it, it changed shift. And I just started dealing with all the comedians. And I was like, you know what? This is a little bit better, man. These niggas, and they're getting paid, so they ain't really frustrated like a lot of the rappers, you know? <laughs> Let's go in, baby. So... Okay, I like to get into your background. Okay, I like to get into your background. I know you from Memphis, right? Born in Mississippi, raised in Memphis, raised in Milwaukee, been what in part Atlanta. Of Mississippi? All over? Cleveland. Ooh. In the Delta. All right. Yeah. So, raised with your mom and dad? They was both was around. Why, why you say it like that? There was both they around. they both was around. <laughs> I seen them every in other the day. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, siblings? Yeah, it was eight of us. Dang. Where did you fall in the eight? Number two. Number two? <laughs> wow. I was the first boy. The first. So you know, they treated me like shit, you know. <laughs> no. Yes. The oldest boy, get out the way. Yeah, he Ooh. don't really get No, but yet. when he first came, you when? was everything when you first came. No, but it was one came a, How a far year after? and some change behind. Oh, so <laughs> Before I knew it was a such thing as a baby, I wasn't a baby no more. <laughs> I wasn't no, the baby no more. Quick. So how is it like being raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Because a lot of people who sit in that seat is always like single parent household. Mom and dad went in the same household. My dad was right there. Oh. When he left, he was still right there. Oh. Yeah. So he was I, still a part of your life. I was a great son. Okay. I was a great son. He was there. I didn't, my mama back then, I guess she was 22, 23. Okay. She might say, your dad, this, dad, that. I went and found him. I wasn't mm. that, I wasn't like a mama boy sucker nigga listening to what his mama said. I still went out and found a man that went with this woman. Like, who is, I got to go with him too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, just, I did it all on my own. It wasn't like he would come, I would find him. Because mm. it was easy down there in Mississippi yeah, to find yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. If she took us up to Milwaukee, where we in Memphis, I still knew where to find him. Okay. I knew exactly. His mama, his his, his sisters, all of them, his, they here. They was at the show Thursday. Wow. Damn. They all in Dallas. That's I'm the awesome. reason for that relationship. Me. Solely me. Not the grandma, not the mama. Me. I put mm. my daddy's side of the family on my, right there beside me. So, yeah, that was that what it was. Wow, <laughs> that's good. But did you ever feel, because sometimes, because I, I do that with, some people but then sometimes the pressures are um heavy because when you're trying to bring family together and people together and sometimes they don't want to do it right that's because you don't want it to work like whenever they do that bullshit just eat it up like it won't be nothing if they don't mm. kill you or steal you or, or rape you just eat it, up. eat it up so it's like whenever my mom used to do it she ain't got that kind of pressure she'd be like fuck them i'm like nah 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 so i always stay with that family thing and all of them love me you, you know love what I mean? family don't you yeah when you ain't family then it's a different thing. When you ain't really blood, you know, I don't think blood thicker than water. I mean, I don't think water nowhere close to blood. I think blood is what it is and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Family, I tell people, I say, I slap one of my family members before I slap a nigga in the street because I know my family member ain't going to kill me. That's true. So, you know what I mean? But shoot, like we that. hear stories. Nah, but we hear stories about family yeah, members killing be, all Yeah, but that be that, but I guarantee you, mm -hmm. us three don't know one of our family members who no, we, we think don't. will kill no. us. No, exactly. we don't. Exactly. They, they, niggas will say they'll do something, but then these niggas back off of it too, them family members. Nigga, I'll kill you when I see you, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they would have feeling sorry for you while they saying it, man. 
I know this. <laughs> Niggas ain't finna blow up nothing and ain't gonna do I killing got like that. I cuss out and threaten. I know I love me death. If somebody touch him, I'm gonna go to jail. That's for right. Him. That's right, man. So you was a daddy's boy. You wasn't a mama's boy. You said I didn't. I wasn't gonna ever be. Mm -hmm. When I heard that word when I was young, I knew it. You didn't. I like knew it. I wasn't gonna go in that direction. I knew it wasn't gonna be nothing soft about me. Mm. I knew all I needed my mama was to be that vessel to hold me in there. When I jumped down and could smell the air, like I said, knew it was a. I mean, I've been in it. I actually, it, she knows it. She gonna see this if she do. If she don't, I'm gonna show it to her. <laughs> I've been able to go outside and stay out there all night since I was about six, seven, uh -uh. seven years old, six, seven. I ain't nobody ever told me come in the house when the lights dog. come on and all that. I ain't never heard that. I remember. <laughs> I remember vaguely hearing it when I was about five. My mom told me bring the big wheel in the house. We was living um, in Milwaukee on And you Locus. in the country, that's why. No, this is in Milwaukee, man. Milwaukee wasn't the country. Oh, Milwaukee, okay. is, Chicago. Milwaukee is it's Chicago. Yeah, that's wow. right. If you ain't never been, then never. that's what you'll lack. Of, Milwaukee is a city. City, yeah. Okay. Milwaukee is the, probably most city than any city in the nation. Like, really killers, real Milwaukee. I hear that. It's a small Chicago, it's a small Chicago same template. But these are probably the most proper speaking people in the whole United States. They speak the language better than anybody. These mm. Wisconsin people. Yeah, yeah. No, they speak the, They speak well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think you know when I look at just just uh, Milwaukee, I think about like Pimp and Ken. Yeah, because I know he's from there. Uh, that boy we interviewed the other day. Yo, what's up, boss? Or what? Mm. I don't know. What's that two one four two one four something? But uh, yeah, real four one four too real. Yeah, too yeah. Real. But it, it, four one four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was just on the show. He, he go hard. Um, but man, so how did you get breaking up into comedy? Into comedy. Yeah. But see, you think about it, the nigga was outside from a kid. He done seen a lot. The nigga done seen everything. You know, <laughs> seen and did at that and point. did at that by point. Twelve. Yeah, I was about to say you've been in the by streets. Twelve. I had seen all that they rap about. I'd already seen. I already, I already put seen. crack on my tongue when I was eleven years old. Yeah, I already knew it makes your tongue. No, no. But, but then I, how you didn't succumb to the streets? Because I would be, because it wasn't time for me to succumb yet. I could have because my cousin in front of me, my cousin behind me. Right. Like I'm like the eighth grandchild. The the the, the, the seven and the nine so came. None mm -hmm. of my siblings because they watched me. None of my siblings. You know, it was eight of us. My grandma right. had nine kids, but the ones kind of like them niggas all be a prison time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't succumb because. My mama messed around and was putting that comedy out there, laughing at that comedy. And then I was in school and they were laughing at me, but it ain't like I knew what comedian was. It ain't right. even I knew what funny was. Being myself. Not even being so funny, just being witty. Yeah. It's, yeah, just being witty. You come up in a time, who was who was hot when you first came into the game? When I came uh, into yeah, the game? Yeah, when you first came the to the game. The hottest person in the, the world? The hottest person. Chris Tucker. Mm. Chris Tucker was on it. Yeah, just did Rush Hour too. I was just oh, about to ask yeah, him Rush Hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's was, uh, a bad boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Tucker was the hottest thing. Kings of Comedy had just died down a little bit. Kevin was not yet. Chris Rock was on a little low or whatever. Jamie was on a little hiatus. Chris Tucker in that Rush Hour too. How would you? How did you end up just bumping into comedy? Like, when did you hit the stage, or did you? Because you did the groundwork. You could. You didn't come in on the internet mm -hmm. side of it. You the actually came wasn't in. Around. You came in on the. I gotta go on the stage and get. I you. never was an amateur comedian. Like you know, how they go in the open mic and yeah, stand yeah, and yeah, sit you around. Never did that. I, I did it. I went in there, but I thought. You know, it's like if you're 10 and you think you're supposed to get an apartment and pay the bills. Mm -hmm. If you get an apartment and pay the bills, then you 10 with an apartment and paying paying the bills. That's all I did. Wow. So when I graduated high school, 46 days later, I moved to Atlanta. But before that, in ninth grade, they voted me class clown. It ain't like I told them to vote. I was chilling in October. School started in September. By homecoming, which is a month or two later, they had me class clown, and wow. I had just left Milwaukee. Damn. I knew them like that, but I ain't know them folks in Mississippi like that. Not that particular ninth grade class of 2000 class. Yeah, but that's crazy. Ninth grade, you know, you in the 12th grade, they be paying attention. Yeah, that's what that, so that's I, what I tell you people, do it in the ninth grade. Gonna get it. I tell them, I said, I got rookie of the year. In the ninth you be grade. You counting everybody at school. I, I, that's what I said. You you got it. No, I got I, some I old as that. hell. I'm, I remember I, I was I was gunning for class. You had to be 11 class. or 12 grade. Yeah, you By the time be. you get voted some. But you yeah. come in that whole early. So how did I, you get voted so I early? I don't know. They just called me. I was sitting in the class. They were like, they called me Lee Kelly. Like, Lee Kelly to the some some to the library. And then when I got in the library, I seen old sexy nigga. And then I seen old running nigga. And I seen a Spanish speaking nigga. So it was outstanding everything in right. Right. English 
Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And they were like, you class one. <laughs> You like I did it. I was like, no, I ain't saying I did no, it. Man, I was no. I was say, is that something good? Though? No, it's no. really. That's it, not nothing good. No, it yes, is. It is. It's good. It's great. Is it? Yeah, because yes. people recognize you for making people laugh at yes. school. It's not a class bad thing. clown. Yeah. Is great. She okay. from Jamaica, so they didn't have no, that. No, class didn't clown have that. is great. Okay. So no, you know, just it's great. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so the girl they brought up, Lashonda James. They brought up, and I knew she was funny to me. She was crazy to me, like straight up a crazy nut. Like not like smart, very smart, but just a nut. Having a good time. Yeah, so I was like, maybe maybe I must be doing on or something. So I left there, and we went to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. No, we went to Memphis. So it wasn't really nothing funny around Memphis that much. People was checking, everybody was checking. So I picked up a little more skill Cause I still think Memphis, Tennessee is the most uh, gunning, what they call it, ribbon, uh, checking. I think nobody Joan harder than Memphis in the nation. I'd have been in 46 states. Wow. I don't care if you put take them nowhere. Nobody talk about the garbage man going to say, get your little shoe ass on out of here. Everybody. <laughs> the post office, the postal, the mail man going to say, man, move the ragged ass car, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, niggas know, niggas going to come in and say it. So coming to Memphis, in that high, in them high school days, getting that training and going straight to Milwaukee and talking different, that's what made me want to be a comedian more wow. than anything. Yeah, yeah. So in in March of '01, but I said class 2000 early, but I had failed and I was out of there, so they ain't never seen me no more. <laughs> Once I my class went on to graduate, I wasn't finna go back to school with them folk and be waiting around to graduate. So I shot out of there. Man. So I get to Milwaukee. See, Latrell Spewell's nephew. He okay. went to the same high school. His his nephew was a senior. Most popular, light-skinned, tall nigga in the school. He played basketball. Think about it. You Latrell, Sp Latrell yeah. Spewell's nephew at the time the spinning rims was out. Yeah. So <laughs> this nigga real. paraded me around the whole school to me, yo, this nigga is funny. <laughs> and like round about a month later, April, I did a show in the school. With the staff. Killed it. Ain't, I ain't had to kill it. You just being you. I, I, no, I ain't had to kill it. That's the misconception. You just got to do it. Mm. That's real. I did it. He had the nuts to do I, it. When I look at the tape, I cringe all the time about how funny I wasn't. But you did it. But I did it. But back then, you was funny to everybody. Not really. Even when I... That's one thing you can't do. It's subjective as you want it to be. Funny is real. You, the, 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 the timing and the premises was not there. So, no, it wasn't. You can be as nice as you've been for God. When you say you look... She's nice. You got a nice one. Oh, yeah. My wife, she be tripping, man. Said, no, you was funny. She wasn't even there. You, was funny. you had to be funny to stand up there. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> I did another one. I did another one later too. No, because you know how people always say, you know, when they look back on when they first started and all of that, they're like, "Oh no, I was, rappers do it all the time. I wasn't good. That's trash. This, 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 this compared to what they're doing now." So I can imagine comedians looking back on what you did back then compared to what you're doing right now. Yeah, but it's on film, and like I say about comedy, we can rate the comedians. Mm -hmm. It's nothing about you talking about comedians move me I know you know nothing about it even if you think you watch a lot of it and you grew up with one and you date one until you go on that stage and do it for real for it. a minute then you're gonna go to figuring out like whoa these okay yeah that's why he got a million dollars and that's why that's it's so many uh, T's to cross and I has to die what's the hardest thing about being a comedian originality K Dub, let's, let's, let's cut. Let, let Kelly K Dub is in the building, y'all. I wanna, I gotta ask you about like, it's a lot of dudes been on here that's comedians that say when they go on stage, a lot of these older comedians when they go on stage, they basically tell them they can't when they when they leading the way for them. They mm -hmm. say they can't be as funny because they don't want to be too funny. Then the guy that's coming behind them. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that situation? Well, it never happens. And when an older comedian do that, I know what they're talking about. What happens is an older comedian probably be telling them in a good way, yo, my dog, you're doing all this hack-ass material. Sometimes the comedian coming in front of the one that sat here and said that, yeah. his material is so shitty and unoriginal to where the, 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 the headliner got to be like, yo, I'm already doing this unoriginal hack shit. You can't do it too. <laughs> I got to get through 45. <laughs> 
You only got to do 20. Let's not go up and talk about eating ass and eating chicken and fucking a bitch from the back and uh Cuz I'm going to do that too. Nah, at the house. I got to do that. Say that for me. I got to do an hour. So, so they don't kill the crowd like what if they, this, they don't this, kill the crowd? Trust first? me. Any comedian that says that, I don't I ain't I ain't, I ain't seen them who said that. They got to understand they got to come up with a joke that nobody else do and the headline don't mm -hmm. talk to you. You go back and watch me. I got a joke about a hash brown. You don't know nobody with a joke about a hash brown. <laughs> I got a joke about a dog with no legs. Nobody got a joke. I was the first person to do that little self checkout machine joke with this. I did that on Bad Boys of Comedy. We taped that in 03. Damn. So my jokes are always, I got this joke. Uh, well, I, ain't, I got this joke <laughs> about my daughter. She's gay. And that's where I'm at with it. You feel me? Yeah. So yours always is your jokes, and they so original to you that, 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 that can't that, nobody that ain't got to talk to me mm, because he's gonna it. look at me and be like, "Oh, that dub shit, his ass over there." He gonna ramble on and yeah, like I do. I don't sound like him. I don't sound like nobody. A lot of these comedians be funny, but that's when I talk shit to him. I said it on big fact, nigga. Comedian can suck a dick. You unoriginal ass nigga. Ninety four percent of them are very very unoriginal, and everybody know it. Damn, ninety like four, ninety seven. Ah, but yeah, they always but they always say you know as much as you think that you the only one go through certain things, you're not the only one who go through certain things. So if another comedian from somewhere else come up with the same joke that you, you have, you really can't. You really can't. You telling me that's impossible? Yes, it really is. Like a fingerprint, it really is. He's stealing. He heard it. He's stealing. That's all. He's stealing about as much as you sneaking far in public when somebody ain't around. <laughs> He's stealing. But okay, still in. if you original, mm -hmm. I look when I was looking because I researched you. Somebody, it was a woman said that you took her joke. Who me? Yeah, no, I said a woman took you my said, joke. Okay, you said she. Took, <laughs> I knew <laughs> it. somebody took hey, a joke. Guys, yes. Big last funk ass, but she okay, known but for saying, that. But, but at the end of the day, she known for that. She apologized so you've had for it. You've had people to take your she joke. Apologize, but no, you've never took. You've never used nobody. No, country. I have been on original before, and I've never took nobody's joke. But I have used stock jokes plenty of times because they gonna sound a lot. Because now stock joke is a joke like a joke that's on a shelf that anybody could use that's been used since the forties or fifties. That's the reason I say that headline and say, hey, don't you be so hack. But when I go up, for, like if somebody come to see me tonight where well, we're going to be at, at the uh, Arlington oh, Improv, improv. you're not going to see shit hacking there. Mm -hmm. All that is great material. But these motherfuckers go up at the Arlington and be hacked. Mm -hmm. Maybe somewhere down in Colleen, Texas, after doing an hour, I might fuck around and say the skin on your elbow, the skin on your nuts is the same skin. That's a hack joke. You can run it how you want to run it. <laughs> you can do. You can do it. <laughs> You can go see it. Skin on your elbow and the skin on your nuts is the same skin. They've been saying that joke since the 30s, 30s. and 40s. Man. Man, Tan Moreland and all them boys back then. Mm. Wow. I got to ask you about the, the internet thing. I always This is the question that originated from Boss Talk 101 that all comedians get asked on here. You basically are a guy that came up before the internet phase was in. Do, do you have internet comedians that basically do skits, do quick jokes, um, they're 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 making a different amount of money than what they used to make when they first started. Do you have? Do you feel like they're funny is the same funny that you guys do? Well, I always say the same thing. It's like it's like your mama cooking and the chef cooking, but they both is good. A chef bring your shit out all pretty the right way and your mama get it together well good for consumption the way she like it the way she know how so that's the internet comedian the mama cooking then as a chef the the, the comedian me i know how to whip it up and and, sh and internet comedians are so necessary they bring so much into the comedy world to, to go out and tell somebody that you a stand-up comedian is a big that's a reach mm. That's a hell of a reach for so a lot you know, of you think it's a different. It's a no. I'm different. saying that you can go on to be a stand up comedian because mm -hmm. look at Tony Rock, look at Bruh Man. These niggas weren't no comedians. They just went on Tony. Not saying he saw his brother. That's my guy. <laughs> but his brother was doing it. He started. Bruh Man said, "You know what? I, I ain't acting as much. Why don't I get this money that's out here?" Right. DC Young Fly was on the internet and he went and got that money. He's getting better at stand up. Yeah. He's He's becoming a great comedian. Yeah. So you Country can't Wayne did it say he started internet and then he's I ain't seen off. Country Wayne yet. You didn't see the Netflix special? Not yet, but I'm going I'm to check it out. Yeah. I ain't seen it yet. And when I look at it, I will give my opinion on mm -hmm. it. 
But still, that not gonna make him any less to his fans because he bringing some people that probably wouldn't have never went to a comedy show out. That's true. That's real. Even if I have my opinion on that special, I still salute Country Wayne regardless. Yeah. It ain't no way where I can't salute him for what shit me. My but, mama but, like him. <laughs> <laughs> but for for him, to, one thing you said early on is just going out there is big when a person can go out in the front yeah. and, but to build up to be on a Netflix special to come from where he come from doing the skits like he was doing them to being up there on a how long they stay on there 45 minutes an hour to an hour or more he up there on that Netflix special about an hour ain't he it depends on how long you want to do that I whole mean, that whole go for I minute. mean whatever here Chris did damn near two hours but it's what you do I mean it ain't like it's a certain amount of, nigga do 30 or 15 on Netflix and get out of there I ain't gonna mm. lie I'll be I told everybody I want to see the drip uh characters on his thing I want to see the, see? the buddy you want to see it right yeah, buddy and so, the drips yeah so, so that's all really matters in you know that. what I mean because that's who that's what made him yeah you know notice to me mm. now that ain't everybody might not be like that but for me those characters on the, on that stage would be a that would be a, a plus for his you know for his fan base because they already love him you know mm -hmm. what I mean so I saw that seeing him act like he some rapper shit that shit was funny to me <laughs> and, and the thing about it, a lot of these guys like when we were when I did Big Facts and I said the thing about Desi Banks not being a comedian I didn't hear that part wait yeah. a minute you said he not a comedian no I said that on there and it was a little confusion about it yeah okay. we we we, ran, we was at Dave Chappelle's show with uh, Kevin Hart and it was a little confusion about it but you know everything got straight like when I said what I said was it wasn't about him not being not doing comedy on stage I was saying I was just talking about the open mic and he talked to me about it afterward and was like, yo, I really do need to get in there. Wow. Mm. Because it was just advice. Sounded fucked up. It's almost like you telling the woman, you stink. You need to get in there and do something to yourself. Mm. And she'll be offended by it. Mm. Like, bitch, I'm telling you. you so she go in the bathroom and check and she realized <laughs> yeah, that she so is fucked. So I'm fun. like, Desi, you, you're leading Atlanta, you in D.C., y'all the internet guy. Not so much internet, but you know, y'all the guys yeah. that everybody mm -hmm. know. How about since I've been around this bitch for a minute, and I know what the fuck going on. I tell you, DC, DC just, I just did Huntsville with DC two weeks hold ago. It, hold paid it. me to watch his set and That's tell me what it. to do. Wow. Desi, I ain't trying to get you to do nothing. <laughs> I just need, I'm watching you too because I'm still around this motherfucker and I ain't around here for nothing. So that, that that's big though that you reaching out to him though like that's that. fucking right. That's hard, bro. Yeah. Because that say that you want to see him get better. Right. Fucking right. Oh, and you you rooting for him, but I'm not. You know, I ain't gonna lie. That's the same thing. Faison said that he was like, I'm not saying that they not good. I'm just saying your football coach don't come to you and say you're doing a great job when you suck. He telling you you got to get better, and I'm gonna show you how. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's really what you're saying for us. You got if if I got to get them better, if I want to see them get better, I got to do something about it. I want to watch they set. It's it's definitely it, it's it's fifty percent selfish, fifty percent unselfish. What I mean is, is that I need them to get better because my grandkids gonna want to go to another pool. They gonna get sick of my pool in the mm -hmm. backyard. So I called Desi Banks. I called DC. I called Duval. I'm gonna drop these kids off. I know you ain't here. I'm gonna let them jump your fence. So I need everybody around me to get some money because I ain't got but forty eight more days left. So. Let me enjoy this shit. And I ain't been in the game this long for you niggas not to blow up. Blow up, motherfucker. That's all but it also pushes a lot of the older comedian because sometimes I would feel like, because I've heard this before, they've been doing the same, not same set, but they change it up. But it if some younger kids come up and they're really good, it pushes them to even push even harder. Well, that ain't gonna never do nothing because David Bland ain't gonna do a do ma new magic trick and R. Kelly ain't gonna do another <laughs> song and what else? Diana Ross gonna keep doing it. Ain't no amount of high enough. You're not finna force nobody to change up their great material. You just gotta see what they do different with it. I'm not, I, I hear people talk about it and I have to right. educate them on it. Like, nobody switches nothing up. Mm. You go watch uh, whoever. Who, who's left? Who's still out there doing it? Frankie Beverly, he's still doing it the same, same way. way. Yeah, ain't nobody, ain't no new match. Though if you go to the circus, he gonna hit that tiger the same way at the same time. Cause if he hit in a different, that tiger gonna tear his arm off. Cause you want him to do something new. Yeah, they do the exact same. The clown come out and it's crowded tears in the crowd at the same time. Them cheerleaders come out and do the same cheer every game. If you look at the Mavs and pay attention to the cheerleaders, it's the same cheers, mm -hmm. man. 
Well, you talk about you talk about um, helping the, the the comedians and so forth. But those are when I think about Desi Banks and all of those people, they're already well known. Are there any other comedians that are there hard working that's been grinding that are not famous yet that Plenty of them. you that you have an eye on that you watch? Them, they ain't well known. They about well known to somebody like us that's in the business, mm -hmm. but. My auntie ain't gonna know who that is. And that's that you missing a lot. You know how known somebody you know how unknown somebody is as they get more famous. I thought DC was real known back right. in two thousand fifteen. Oh. I thought he was very, very known. Then I look at his followers now. I thought Tip was very, very known in two thousand and fifteen. Yeah. Because Tip had two point seven million followers in two thousand fifteen. Right. Now in two thousand twenty three he got fourteen point eight. Yeah. So I yeah. thought that he was very known then. So it's just like what are we doing here? Everybody is very known. How did you link yeah. up with Tip? I gotta ask you that. Did I do when that? I first moved to Atlanta, back yeah, in like oh one oh two, y'all linked up, and it, but it wasn't about. It was just a, the family hustle. You was on a lot of different stuff. Right? Yeah, but this before then. Well, you, but how did you before, meet? In the Magic City, in the strip club. Oh, okay. oh that's oh, okay. how I was Skull there. Bubba, rest in peace, <laughs> Skull Bubba. Skull Bubba walked this by like this probably in two thousand and one. This before. Um, Trap music and all that. I'm actually in that album, Trap right. Music. Yeah. My name is etched in that album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Comedian K Dub and Rolling Powell, Lil Duval, Nard Hostin, Rest in Peace, and wow. Shouty Shouty with my name. Shouty is. Shouty. I'm four comedians that's in that on that album. On that album. But before then, Skull Bubble was like um, this is my man T.I. Right, what that that name this like this my homeboy Joe John. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah. don't ring a yeah. so I look around, I'm like, yeah, what's up? Tip standing there, you got the hat. You know, he, he definitely a motherfucking. <laughs> I can't lie, the bravado was hell. I promise, you, I still look at that. It still sent. It, it made me put my back up straight, yeah, like dead ass yeah, serious. Yeah. This nigga, and I ain't saying this and trying to talk in hindsight to try to make it fit it, but I still didn't think he was no rapper because he was too light skinned for me. <laughs> you feel me? So he, you ain't had light skinned rappers back like then. It didn't matter. It ain't like Heavy I res D. It ain't like I respected him. Yeah. <laughs> He ain't like I gave only light skin rappers. I, rapper no, he, he wasn't there out. Yet. He wasn't only there light skin rappers I kind of like was goddamn Bone Thugs and Harmony. Them Bone little boys, thugs. them up there what moving else? around. Even though they had some darker ones up in there, but no, no, no. We ain't got to think about it. Method man. Nobody. Let's not. Eat. I didn't listen to New York music like that. Period. <laughs> see, I never oh, heard man, of New York you, music you until I moved to yeah. Atlanta. No mute New York music I never heard of till I moved to Atlanta. Why? Cause I just didn't hear of it. It didn't get a play. Didn't get, didn't get a he play. watched Boss Talk too. <laughs> this is this is my guy right here. He telling the no, truth. No, I ain't saying it cause of that. No, I'm telling I'm you. I'm telling you in my mind. I came up way. in Mississippi, Memphis, <laughs> and Milwaukee, South. up down through there. I didn't hear none Midwest. of that. Midwest, yeah. I didn't hear none of that. I ain't hear. I didn't. I I, I remember Hard Knock Life cause my cousin, one of my friends, played it, and. I didn't know who sang. I didn't know which one of the New York niggas was rapping. I didn't know. I didn't really care. It didn't. It didn't. It wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. I was liking Scarface. I was liking Three Six Mafia, Player Fly. I was rocking with Bone. I liked Tupac, of course. I didn't care where he was from. Uh, I like you know. I just liked anything that was coming. Eight Ball and MJG. Yeah, yeah. So it was, I had, I had enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pimp C. Oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, and he definitely. light skin too. Yeah, yeah but the oh, thing he is, go. he didn't talk like a light skin. <laughs> <laughs> and I really never <laughs> saw him until no, later. No, it was the new GK albums. I didn't see them. Right. I knew. I didn't know who they was. Man, selling dope and eight and nine. Hey. I didn't know who they were. Yeah, yeah. I just like that voice and that little tone. If you were saying, yo, put your picture, put your boy, shah, shah, that was New York to me. Yeah. It was all about that time, time. It was all about that eight ball and MJD. That Scarface, man. Scarface. That Scarface was stupid. That's the first, <laughs> Scarface is the first rap I ever learned the lyrics to. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was stupid with it, first man. First time I ever learned lyrics. But, but I think I might have got a hold of New York. I moved to Atlanta in July of 01. And those they had they had took over Atlanta, so when when Jay Z beef with Nas, that was my first introduction to it for real. Who won that? Who won that battle? Well, you know Nas won. That's what I said. <laughs> Nas is one of my top five favorite rappers. I, it ain't that I don't like when I say earlier I don't listen. I never did listen, but as I got older and ventured into it, I know what's what now. You can't a New York person couldn't call me a dummy on the top on the topic. Cause I picked it up in the last twenty. 
Wow. You know That's what I mean? hard, man. Like, I, back to, like, so when you and, you and Tip met, how do y'all, mm. how do y'all maintain this relationship all these years? I, it, it, okay, let's go back to that. I met him, I looked at him, Scobubba said it's T.I. Shook his hand, he was a guy, he was a gentleman. I'm talking about, you can't say nothing bad about him to me. Yeah. Like, you really can't, it's nothing you could say about him. I say stuff about him all the time. <laughs> I talk shit, <laughs> but nobody got nothing to say about him. The nigga was a gentleman then, a gentleman now, same type of person. And I look behind him and see the damn girl from Escape. That's what made me be like, oh, shit, this nigga must be gotten something going on. Mm -hmm. He got to have something going on. Because, you know, that was, that was my favorite. That was my little favorite <laughs> little person from the group. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, you know. But, man, the man was so, like, uh, uh, what they call him trying to find a word. He was more into it than I was in dealing. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to act like, yo, I, I honestly, he know me now. I honestly didn't didn't give much of a fuck like that. Now, when we did get back together, I did look him in the eyes and was like, yo, we got to work. Yeah, This yeah. is 2013, 14, after the jail a couple of times because yeah. in between dealing him from with 01 to about 03, once he dropped Rubber Band, man, Tip kind of like got out of he he kind of got out of there. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He kind of went on a whirlwind. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I see him every now and then, catch up with him. He was still that same gentleman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out of there. Mount up. Gone. Yeah. Then in between, between 03, 07, I might have seen Tip twice. <laughs> 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 and then he got locked up. And then he got out, and I might have seen him two times between 07 and 09. He did, you know, he went to jail two, three he times. He got out, and he and got went, went back, back again. Went right back. Yeah, he did two, three different things that I know of in Atlanta that I know of, two, three different bids. And that last time he got out, I didn't see him no more, and I went out to Charlotte to do a comedy show. Okay. I was a semifinalist. And while I was in a hotel trying to get a form, you know, you get them free form hotels, you got to... Fax the form and mm -hmm. fill it out and take it to the front. I look out the one that saw his security guard running by. It was 2013. I ran out there, left the form, and he was trying to find a park on the streets for the trucks. Yeah. Man, I'm like, where y'all going? I got that number because I ain't been knowing him for years outside of tip. Got the number, met up with him at the strip club, got the number, and we're like, man, we got to work. It was 2013. I said, we got to wow. work, man. I said, I know you've been having your blah, blah, blah. But we got to work. Yeah. And it started then, man. So everything that's going on now is not no fluke at all. Not no fluke. The, the comedy thing, I, I'll jump into that. Did you did you see that coming or did y'all talk about it? Or, cause we he, talked about it. Y'all talked in about 01. it. In oh, so he always wanted to do comedy. I met when I met him, I met him in Madison City, but I met him in the comedy club. I got to know him in the co comedy he club. He was coming on his own. He's him just him, checking it out. Him and Tamika stayed in the comedy. There was a fixture. There were furniture in there. Mm. He liked the comedy club. He, he liked the comedy. He had the night with Lil Duval tripping on Tuesday. I Brian met, also tripping on Tuesday. I wow. met him with Lil Duval when I told him. Yeah, I met him. Lil Duval say, "Hey, Ti, somebody want to call? I took a picture with him because I seen the nigga on Comic View or something. You know, I seen yeah. him on BET. Yeah." And I was like, damn, Lil Duval, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, I had already took pictures with T.I. And I was like, man, let, Lil Duval, let's take a picture. And oh. he hollered at T.I., say, look, nigga, I'm famous. Somebody want to take a picture with me? <laughs> he had dreads in the yeah. damn head. Yeah. We was at the Caesars Palace. I'll never forget that. Yeah. I was this like, this nigga, be, he didn't know nobody at that time. Yeah, be 04, 05, 06, 07 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know nobody. I'm telling you, it, it was new. Who that, Duval? Yeah, mm -hmm. he, no, he was, was brand new. He was famous. He was famous. <laughs> he was famous. That's why you knew him. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, was famous. famous. He just right. was cracking a joke with Tip. Oh, yeah. I got to know Duval in 01. He so was he famous. was already famous. He Duval just got on TV. Ain't me. He ain't me. I'm the one that ain't camera ready. He ready. I've been on more shows than Duval. Well, so he was and just messing with T.I. No, I was messing with T.I. too. I was in the videos too. I'm telling you. Duval been famous since the first time he ever went on an open mic stage. Everybody from the open mic went home and told everybody. 
in, in this spread because I started on one and my classmates know who Duval was. That's wow. why. And I used to be with Duval. Well, I was one of his first This writers. was like 2008 when I first met him. He was super him. famous and probably yeah. rich. And I told him, he was like, man, I'm famous too. Cause he I guess was messing I, with Tip. He messing with Tip then because I'm like, what he the was, hell is he, he talking was, about? He was super famous and probably rich. I bet you he had a big chain on. And I, know, a nice I, got, I got the picture somewhere. I, I bet you he had a nice diamond. And at the house, the one I, it used to be probably there. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I bet you he had a nice diamond. Duval has Duval. been famous since I started. I started in July of 01. People were taking pictures with him then. So was wow. he good to you when you seen him stand up on that stage? You knew he was good. I knew he was a star. First time I ever seen Duval, I knew he was a star. That bring me to something. Like, I heard you say that you don't think Tracy Morgan was... Uh, was that, that's me. But shit, fuck that. I mean, shit, I don't think... That's just your opinion. The Bassett is pretty. I think <laughs> she look like a horse. What the fuck they got to do with the brother? So, that's just so my opinion. Your opinion. And yes, I always thought that. But what that ain't nothing. He, he's not funny? I always thought he's Tracy just, Morgan wasn't that funny back then. Did you ever see him do stand up? Yes. I've always thought he wasn't that funny. That's all. But everybody else loved him. No, everybody, no, everybody says everybody the humor is Everybody in the world don't love nobody. <laughs> I'm saying I said that on there because I just that's my assessment that yeah. I didn't think coming up that he was that funny. I always knew he was getting it. I saw him getting to it. And then when you watch Martin, he had a couple of good episodes on that to me, but that's just me. You don't give a fuck about what I think. What about, I, I but Kevin Hart the same? He he came up slow but go. He came up good. Kevin but he Hart came. It, it was not like that at first. He even said he started way. Don't listen to what they say. <laughs> Kevin was famous back then. When I met Kevin, when we did Bad Boys of Comedy, yeah. when we did Bad Boys of Comedy, we thirty six of us taped. In the United States, Puffy picked 36 comedians okay. from around the country. Kevin Hart walking through there like he owned the place back then. Back that then. was in July of 03. We taped that at the Bam Harvard Theater up there in Brooklyn. In 03, Kevin Hart was walking through there like he owned the place. Puffy was in there cussing somebody out. Security had his arm on the door like this. Security was like on the door, leaning on the door. Kevin Hart walked under his arm. Mm -hmm. Damn. That's just what I seen. That has nothing to do with somebody <laughs> told me Kevin walk. I saw him walk under. under I ain't walked under nobody's security arm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What you about to add? No, okay. So with comedy, with, um, there's a roadmap to how you do this, right? What you mean? Like, um, I'm new coming into comedy. <laughs> there's a structure. No. There's not no structure. The template is the same template to be a good real estate agent. It's the same thing as to get out here and network and be known and do good business. Good product. Remember mm -hmm. I said originality earlier? Right, right. If you mess around and do some original jokes and be and, and talk shit like me, you'll fuck around and wind up on boss talk top at least. Hey. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Just have some original material. Who has the, out of all of the comedians you've ever watched, who has like the most out of the way comedy that you've ever seen, the most original? Because a lot of people come up with their own original JB stuff. JB Smooth, I would say. JB Smooth. Wow, shout out. JB Smooth. He's a, he's a bad motherfucker, man. He's one of the most, I'm still thinking as I go, but he's one of the most original. He got a joke about a police in the country with no car and chasing the car with a flashlight. You got to watch him do it. <laughs> He just go. He, he, so I he, need to put him on my list to watch. JB Smooth, Never. yes, ma'am. He was. He's probably laughing at a comedian. I probably laughed at him the hardest. Downtown Tony Brown from Detroit. JB Smooth. He's a comedian that you still your favorite comedian couldn't stand next to him. Really? No, they couldn't. Um, what type of com comedy do you like to watch? Because I know there's everybody does different kinds of comedy. What's like, your like most it. favorite type? I like fast-paced comedy. I, I like stories. I like anything that's original. That's the type right there. That is the type. Yeah, you keep saying that. That's all you need to know because you're going to mess around and be laughing at somebody else's joke and not know it. See, we're yeah. not laughing at nobody else's jokes over here. If you got to do your own jokes, that's what that's mandatory. That's, that's your job. You know all of this stuff. When we don't know it, you know it. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to start at what type. We want him to be first is it yours? Mm. Is it your idea? That's for, you know, y'all might say, oh, he was funny though. <laughs> Man, get out of here. What about Corey Holcomb? 
Yeah, Corey Oakham is a good original comedian. He's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would love to watch him because I know it's going to be his perspective of how he feel, and he's going to be as clever as he can. He's going to pull it as tight as he can. Who's the funniest female? Some more. I think hands Easy. down. Easy, huh? Who is Easy. the most funniest white boy? My top white boy is Robert Schimmel. But then you got uh, Bill Burr, who's a, Robert Schimmel is dead. But Bill Burr is probably number one to me. How you feel about Gary Owens? Gary Owens funny too. That's he my is. guy. That's the first person that ever gave me a chance. I had to be a white boy. Wow, really? Yeah, Gary Owens is the first person that ever let me feature in a comedy club like a real comedian. Wow. When did that happen? It happened in um in uh oh two. Uh um June of oh two. June of oh two. How did you click up with him? He was just headlining at the comedy club, oh. and uh, I used to just stand in there because I had just moved back to Atlanta in May, and June came. I got the ninety nine dollars special apartment, so I was just hanging out at the comedy club like shit. I got to at least do a guest spot, something. So Gary walk in, the white GM named Dave picked him up and brought him in during the daytime. I saw him. I had already been talking to Dave about he need to let me feature or something. And then Dave was just like, oh, my God, I don't have a feature this week. And I was like, I'll feature. And Gary was like, yeah, let this guy feature. He and didn't even know your comedy, none. No, he didn't. He was just, man. Yeah, just shit. giving you a chance. He just said, let this guy feature. And then he, he kind of like paid for my little food all weekend and my little coat because I ain't drank or nothing. And then we went out to 112 that weekend. He paid for my wings and stuff in there. And then just Gary Owen, you can't say nothing bad Have about you, Gary. And Owen. you guys worked together numerous time. times since Gary, then. I feature, I kind of feature for Gary, 2012, 13, and stuff like That's that. That's hard, man. Went on the road with him. What comedian ever gave you the best advice ever? Best advice came from um, probably T. K. Kirkland. Mm, what was it? Man, look at you. Get you a little credit card. Get you a little hotel card where you go. You can get you a hotel for twenty nine dollars, and you gotta get you a bitch that love you. <laughs> you gotta get a bitch that love you that'll take care of you. Get you some insurance because you're gonna need it. Make sure you call these promoters and you be nice and you be on time. You know, you just go. He just go. Man, <laughs> you been living by oh, that. Right. Just like I can like so many <laughs> TK and bump heads so many times. You don't know how I feel about it. I bump here with the TK because I'm going bump heads with you probably. But we ain't never gotten to no beef or nothing. Yeah, right. yeah. It was just little small right. shit about that's pink. No, that's Simon. So, <laughs> man, but he, he, he TK. Man, that's cool. And yeah. what about uh, the movie and the partners, man? Like you in that thing, man? Like how was that working on that set? Man, it wasn't no work. It Damn wasn't? Shit. Fuck no. It you had no fun. I'm a mechanic. My dad a mechanic, granddad a mechanic, uncle's a mechanic, so it was easy for was me to natural. get out there and be a mechanic. And wow. then working with these guys, most of these guys a lot of them in there came too. up under me. Mm -hmm. Carlos, they all came up yeah. under me. DC, Tyler, Ronnie. We, man, Ronnie came up together. I came up under Henry. Me and Tip, he the director. We came up together. DC, I done brought them in the game. Nav she Green. Nas Myron was in there, too. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. She Nas Myron, he from Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah sure is. But, but they all up under me, them my folk. Like, when I say up under me, I don't mean, like, no, but you, down. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. the tutelage. I done told mm -hmm. all of them something. What do you think about Funny Marco? Funny Marco? Yeah. I said he wasn't a comedian on that thing. <laughs> I, I ain't but heard that. I'm just I, asking I twisted you. it and kept trying to say not like that, but he, he probably he knows he's not man. a comedian. But as far as the respect level, nigga, we, we good on that. We I, I just got his number probably at the game, at the Falcons game. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you asked about him because I, I, did, I, I didn't know him like that. I didn't know him like that. And he was already famous. You know, you get to know all the comedians, but somebody was like, that's Funny Marco. And one time he was at a show and somebody said it when I left. They were like, I heard Funny Marco was there. I was like, who is Funny? I said, I keep hearing that name. And then they was Got like, uh, huh? So he buzzed. And he, no, this was probably... He, he, a year ago. Okay. okay. Now he was. Yeah, he was okay. good then. Yeah. No, he yeah. definitely. But when I, I seen a couple videos, but they all fall in with the your video. Yeah. And stuff. yeah like your yeah. video just came across. Yeah. And I watched, kept watching yeah. them. So funny, Marcos came across, but I couldn't have said boss top. I couldn't have said that to nobody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I know I you watched. You knew it. it. Yeah. So when I saw you, I ain't say what up, boy. Like what's up, man? Yeah, you sure did. Watch the video. Yeah, I so, love that, bro. Like so, man. So with Marco, I had seen a couple, but I didn't keep 
track of the right. face like that. The name too. Mm -hmm. But I but he was so nice and always and that and that's and, and one thing about it, if you are a nice person, then you're gonna really get a pass. Wow. If you're a nice person, you get a pass on a lot of stuff. That's and awesome. that's what he was just a very nice guy. And in this industry, do you? I don't know, but I gotta ask him about when he. You, did you see when they he interviewed the guys and they threw yeah. the cup and all? They threw his watch and just threw it. They tore his Mar ass up. Marco you know I mean? probably was with that man. Yeah, because it, 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 it went through the roof. Marco it went was, through the damn Marco roof. Was with that man. <laughs> I told. I just said he's a nice. I, I promise you, when I, I seen him at the game, I was like, this is a kind guy. Wow. And I like kind people. Yeah. Not that I'm the kindest motherfucker on the planet, but I like <laughs> genuine kind people. No, you dope, bro. Like I say, you. I'm gonna be real with you. When I seen you, you, hey, you lit up my day. So yeah. I never forget you. Oh, It'll yeah. never be done. And whatever, yeah, I'm coming to your show. Y'all need to I, pull I'm up tonight. Out. I don't. I don't. She know how I am. I don't like them crowds, man. I, I ain't but got no tickets to get in there. Y'all probably sold out. It says that y'all are sold out. Yeah, it is sold out. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I've been there a lot of times. But I, I love seeing good comics, and I I come to your show myself. I will fly to your show, nigga. You ain't got. I'm gonna come find you. You ain't. Watch, you gonna say this nigga just came this nigga found came me. To the show. I'm gonna come find your ass. You ain't got to worry about that now. You done they done messed up. You gonna like this nigga think he know this nigga? I'm gonna be there. Be ain't there no baby. Tell me about the first time you headlined your own show. First time I headlined. Damn, that's crazy. Let me let me think back. Got him. <laughs> you got me. You ain't thought about that shit in a long time. That's crazy. <laughs> let me go back the first time I headlined. Because uh, I can imagine how it must have felt because going from featuring all the time to yeah, headlining, yeah. I know that must have felt some sort of way. Bruh, you got me right there. <laughs> <laughs> let me go back. Dang, it was that long ago? Man, I'm telling you about it. It had to be 20 years. I had been in this forever. Been for real for the World Trade Center drop. <laughs> Ooh, we man, World Trade Center was still up when I started. Why that crazy? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm telling. I traveled with no cell phone, no GPS, Ooh, you no did? map quest. I traveled. That's old school. You got a nigga got map. They would say jump on 85. It's gonna turn into 95. You jump on 95. You get off at. Some something you gonna hit Poe White in Richmond, Virginia. You wouldn't do that right now. What? I would. Yeah, you would you do know, that I got right the now. Brain. You watch my interviews. You know I got the brain. That's the thing. I got the brain. I can think of it. I can remember. You can remember, it. but you can't remember the first time you you featured. I can't. I can. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, I can tell you. That's the thing about it. I can't tell you the exact time because to be honest with you, you if I city? go back, I would have to go back. Uh huh. You remember what city? See, that's what I'm saying. I got to go back to what categorizes headline because I remember doing the Bridge Cafe. Mm -hmm. And Nesto had me headline. He said he did an hour and something. But there was a lot of rambling. I'm trying to really think what's classified as the headline because Nesto was just giving me 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Nesto was trying to open up another, he was trying to open up a company called The Bridge. Because when I think about somebody being a headline, number one, you make making big money when you're yeah. a headliner. See, this one, this that's what I'm trying to Okay, the first and you have all the features under you. The first time I went out and did something like that, still don't. I have been doing it. It still had to be back in the old threes. I've been taking comedians. I never was an amateur. I never thought I had to wait two days to get a DVD. I got a DVD. You ever a week. got booed before? Yeah, I got booed twice. When you first started? No. Mm. Well, no, I was, too, I was too good to get booed. <laughs> so when did I you get booed? I got booed at Clark Atlanta, September 24th, 04. That was three years after I started. But wow. I got booed because I kept saying the word. Mm. And I was really going in. You were going in? In Atlanta? At Clark. Mm. But it Damn. breathed that shit. Yeah. What made you feel so brave that you felt like you needed to do it something like that? Who gave a f about their feelings? That's right. It was a different time. <laughs> Who gave a f about any of their feelings? Like you thought I gave an intro. None. So you didn't regret it? Not that I don't regret it, but I didn't give a f about mm. them. And not like I still don't, but f it was f them. I was 22 years old. You're young. They could have ate a that day, man. <laughs> and when I got booed, I didn't give a f then. I, it kind of got to me. You know how I had to get to right. anybody. But I was like, f them. You only booed because I called y'all. You know what I mean? It was more fuel to me. I left there not rehabilitated. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, and, the oh, oh, and the second time oh, you, you booed. It was at Clark. Again. <laughs> 2011. You went back. 
<laughs> like, nigga, I'm going 2011. back. 2011. That's May, far during the end of the year. Benji Brown, Corey Hogan got booed that night too. Oh. Corey Hogan got booed. We just talked about that in LA about three weeks ago. He got booed that night Why? too. Why? Because he just was doing the type of shit I'm talking about. <laughs> I didn't do it that time. <laughs> I was light. He went right back up with that same stare. You just seen me get one. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, the wow. time 20 that day. Damn. Clark ain't gonna let you do it. And I just did Clark again this year. Didn't get booed. Because I was so nice and fair to <laughs> That's how you doing, ladies and gentlemen. You know, LBGTQ. <laughs> I got to get you out of here, though. But I, <laughs> didn't somebody swing on you on the stage? Many times. I mean, I done been to fights on the stage. Yeah. I, Tennessee, I knew Tennessee. she was going to look like that. I knew yeah. she was going to look like that. I always wonder if anybody ever got in a fight because I've yeah. seen where people get so heated, but I've never seen a fight on stage yes. in a comedy club. I've you were on them. You were on them. Did you go back air. on stage and finish? No, your set? I, 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 no, no. It was over in Clarksville. It was over in Memphis. It was y'all over. shut that whole down. It was shut down. And shut then down. Uh, I've seen you where a fight break out in the crowd too, and I kept going like whoa, and the shoe was still there. And have you ever heard gunshots in the club? No. No, I never heard gunshots on. Yes, in DC. <laughs> in DC, why? Yeah, in DC. In DC. Why yes. performing? We were in the basement at this club. Eddie B used to host, and yes, that shit is crazy because we was we couldn't run out because we was in the basement and we could hear it. that there was a club upstairs. When we come in, it was when we come in the front door. You could go that way to the club, or you can go downstairs to the comedy show. Now, when you go that way, you're going, you're going that way, basically. And that's where the club at. We just came in to do comedy. So in the middle of the show, as you can hear, it was and you can see, you hear the chair scrubbing the floor. You can hear everything and blah, blah, blah. And then as they ran out, you can hear the pop, pop, pop. Damn. And then been there. we stayed down in the bottom. And when I, we, they, they told us, well, Eddie B, Eddie Bryant, D.C., Told us we can come up. We went upstairs and it looked like a tornado had went through that motherfucker. Man. It was cutting up. No, I'm talking about it's like a good fight, man. I just That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What? Well, I got to ask you about one more comedian before I let you off and then I'm going to get his top three comedian. Mm-hmm. Eddie Griffin, what do you think about him? He's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Bro. Eddie Griffin Dude. is, uh, I need this. Mm-hmm. Eddie Griffin is, uh, he top tier. Mm. I love Eddie Griffin. I saw him. And I love Monique. I saw her stand up one time, and I fell in love with her because Monique. she had me cracking she's up the a whole sweet time. Woman. I hate the way they do it. She's a she, I, 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 she's a sweet woman. Mm. Remember, I told I you I like nice say. people. She's a very nice woman. Um, man, listen, man. Um, top three comedians of all time, mm, dead or alive. That's easy. That's real easy. Bill, Red, Eddie. Bill, Red, Eddie. That's it. Red, Red Fox. Fox. Bill Cosby. Red, Red Fox. Bill Eddie. Bill being the GOAT of all time. Nobody I have no ever. idea what you keep saying. Too Don't son. worry. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, man, listen, man. I hope we did you justice. I appreciate you for even showing us love, bro. Like I said, it we get a lot of people on here, but that ain't nothing. It's the one God gave me. I know God gave me you. You ain't never gonna lose me. I don't give a damn. You met me here. I'm, you gonna be like, hey, this nigga, this, I'm gonna find your ass, no, nigga. I'm definitely gonna rock with you. You like this nigga found me. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna find your show, and I'm coming to it. I would come tonight if I if I knew you already. I'd already been there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah. being honest. With yeah, because <laughs> so all, all the, go, yeah, we always go to all of our comedians. Show. But either way, yeah. man, like I said, I'm gonna find if your you want to pull up, you could just let me know. Yeah. Now, I don't know. We supposed to go to Papa Do's, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyway, man, I just, I'm going to tell you, man, thank you for acknowledging Boss Talk 101. You say we've been watching this thing. We've been working our butt off, me and my wife, and that nigga Money Moses who car, his uh, car uh, battery quit today, mm-hmm. huh? That's his damn excuse today. His battery quit. That's my other co-host. Yeah. <laughs> So what's the thing you love about the show the most? Oh, you gonna get him on that show? Yeah. I liked it how y'all, I told him that. The only thing I did like about it is how you didn't have that much of an opinion on what people were saying. I was watching him and he was letting you get your rocks off. That's all I remember from it. Just, you wouldn't let him, you wouldn't in it. Like if you watch the certain other podcast, they have their opinion more yeah. than anything. And it's like he was letting, you know, I was just saying I didn't give a fuck. Like, I don't need you to tell me, to teach me now that I shouldn't say those words. I <laughs> said them then and I didn't give a fuck. Would I do it now? No. So yeah. it was easy for me to, it was easy for me to watch it. 
Damn. Because I wouldn't like the motherfucker trying to tell the motherfucker what to do. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You know no, what I mean? That's yeah. your journey. Whatever you have to go through in life, I always feel like God put us through different things for a reason. Yeah. And that's why my shirt says everything happens for a reason. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, and plus, like I said, you dark skinned black ass nigga on this damn thing, man. <laughs> and then, and then, oh, you had old Charleston or something. Oh right? yeah, you right here, yeah. This Trust nigga, me, I can't yeah, tell you, you all the way back. Yeah, I can't tell you everything because I would have to go back and check what I seen. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Man, it's just been working, man. Two years yeah. we've been in this thing. Uh, like I said, God been putting some dope people in our life. You one of them guys, man. Kelly K. Dub is uh, official, and I'm going to be, you got to come back. Departments, man. Departments. If you want to get the apartments, it's departmentsfullfold.com. Man. Departments. D-A-P-A-R-T-M-E-N-T-S. Fullfold. Dot com nine ninety nine to buy four ninety nine rent it. The shit funny as all get out. Executive produced by Clip uh, Clifford Harris, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Lil Duval, uh, DC Young Fly, Carlos Miller, and the Ha Ha Mafia. Make sure y'all check that thing out, man. Wow, man! Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Listen, man, this is one of my ones here. This, this legendary for me. You hear me? <laughs> this has been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a boss is talk. And we out, man.